So this presentation is going to focus on conservation of energy and we are in unit seven, which is roller coaster energy unit. So I wanna remind you of what we talked about last class where the different types of energy that exist in our universe. We specifically started to zoom in on mechanical energy talking about gravitational potential energy and kinetic energy in particular. Just as a reminder, this isn't the first time that we've seen energy this year. The first half when we studied chemistry, we really focused on chemical energy. As a reminder, you had several ways of conceptualizing chemical energy. One of the biggest ideas in chemical energy was that energy is conserved. It comes from somewhere and it goes somewhere. So today's lesson really shouldn't be too much of a surprise that the conservation of energy states that energy can never be created or destroyed, but it can be transferred from one form to another. Another way of saying conservation of energy is to say the energy before something happens needs to equal the energy after that something happens. And a final way of saying this is that the total energy stays constant. So there's some interesting sort of implications of conservation of energy, one of which is the amount of energy in our universe right this very moment is going to be the exact same amount of energy that we had right after the Big Bang, and it will be the same amount of energy that our universe dies with because we only have so much energy to work with. Now that energy can transfer between different forms, but it's not like we're magically getting new energy in our universe. It's not like energy is magically popping out of existence. So as physicists and de roller coaster designers, we are really interested in how this principle applies to roller coasters themselves. So I'm gonna ask you to open up the worksheet called Roller Coaster Conservation of Energy. You can find this on my website posted right here. This worksheet on roller coaster conservation of energy. Pause the video, get that open and meet me there. Okay, so picking up on this worksheet, I'm gonna write on this worksheet, but I want you to note that this is a Google drawing, so you should be able to add text to this worksheet and annotate it, make comments however you need. So this particular roller coaster, it looks like you start at the very top of that 100 meter hill. You go all the way to the bottom and then go over another smaller, just 30 meter hill. And our goal at each of these points is gonna find is going to be to find the kinetic energy, the potential energy, and the total energy of our little rider. And we're given the mass of that rider is 50 kilograms. So let's take a look. I want to start at our first hill, that 100 meters. So let's zoom in. We're asked to find the kinetic energy, the potential energy, and the total energy. Now, one assumption that we are told here is that our little rider is starting from rest. And this is often a really fine assumption to make. If you've ridden a roller coaster before, you can imagine the suspense building as you go up that really big first hill. And when you're, when you're at the top, kind of looking over the edge, you're probably going really, really slow. So I think it's a safe assumption to say that you're at rest, meaning the velocity is zero. And thinking about kinetic energy, knowing kinetic energy is one half mv squared, well, if my velocity is zero, my kinetic energy is going to be zero too. So I'm gonna write in zero joules, not OJ, zero joules. Next up, we're asked to find the potential energy. For potential energy, I'm remembering our equation, potential energy is equal to m G H. Now I'm expecting a lot of potential energy because our little rider is very high off the ground. Let's calculate it. We know mass is 50 as given in this problem. Acceleration due to gravity here on earth is 9.81 and the height of this first hill is 100 meters. Calculating that out, we get potential energy equal to 49,050 joules. Last but not least, we are asked to find the total energy. The total energy is nice and easy. It's just the kinetic energy plus the potential energy. 
since we had zero kinetic energy here, all of our total energy is coming from the potential energy. I'm going to zoom back out because we now have a really important piece of information that can help us with everything that comes after. We know the total energy. And according to conservation of energy, energy can't be lost, it can't be destroyed, it can't be magically created. The amount of energy you have is what you're stuck with. So I can actually fill in every total energy to be the exact same amount. So 49,050 goes in all of my total energy categories. I should point out that we are assuming 100% efficiency, which we'll talk about towards the end of this lecture. So let's take a look at our second place. I'll zoom in to our little guy who is now halfway down the first hill. He's at 50 meters. I'm tempted to start with kinetic energy, thinking that kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared. But here that isn't really that helpful to me because I don't know the velocity halfway down the hill. So instead I'm going to switch gears and I'm actually going to try to solve for potential energy first. Using potential energy is mgh. For potential energy, I know the mass, 50. I know the acceleration due to gravity here on Earth, 9.81. And I know the height now, you are 50 meters down the hill. Plugging into my calculator, this comes out to be 24,525 joules. I'd like to point out that another way of finding this that's probably a little quicker is to notice that we are at half of the height. We went from 100 meters to 50 meters. And since potential energy equals mgh, when you half the height, you simply half the potential energy. But we still have to solve for kinetic energy. And this equation, 1 half mv squared, is still not very useful to us. We still don't know the velocity. But we do know that kinetic energy plus potential energy needs to equal our total energy. So our kinetic energy plus 24,525 potential energy needs to equal our total energy. Solving this equation, we can see that there are 24,525 joules of kinetic energy here too. If we were asked to find the velocity, now we could go back to kinetic energy is 1 half mv squared and solve for velocity. As a quick check, kinetic energy plus potential energy still equals total energy. We are showing conservation of energy. Energy has transferred between forms. We used to have zero kinetic energy. And now we have some kinetic energy, 24,525 joules. We used to have a lot of potential energy. And now we have less because that potential energy that we lost went to the kinetic energy we gained. Next up, we're going to zoom into the very bottom of the hill. This particular hill goes all the way to the ground, theoretically. And at the ground, I'm thinking that we're going to have a lot of kinetic energy, but not so much potential energy. I'm imagining riding a roller coaster where I'm going really fast at the bottom of a hill, but not so high off the ground. In fact, for our potential energy, knowing that potential energy equals mgh, and knowing that my h is zero meters, that means that I have zero joules of potential energy. Well, where did all of that lost potential energy go? It simply was transformed into kinetic energy. I must have 49,050 joules of kinetic energy because I know potential plus kinetic is going to equal my total energy. And last but not least, we have this tiny little hill at 30 meters to deal with. Let's zoom in there. 
I'm tempted to start with kinetic energy again, thinking one half mv squared, but I don't have v. So I'm going to skip down to potential energy and see if that can help me out. Potential energy is mgh. Our mass is 50. Acceleration due to gravity here on Earth is 9.81. And h over this tiny last hill is 30. Plugging this into my calculator, this comes out to be 14,715 joules of potential energy. I can use this information to then help me find my kinetic energy. I know that kinetic energy plus potential energy needs to equal my total energy. I'm looking for kinetic energy. I just found potential energy, and I already know my total energy from conservation of energy. Solving this out, I get 34,335 joules of kinetic energy on this last hill. I like this view because you can really see the transfers of energy going on. Yes, the total energy is remaining constant. Energy is not being magically created or destroyed but it is being exchanged between kinetic energy and potential energy. We have one last question to answer though, and it's right here at the bottom. It says, what is the maximum velocity of this roller coaster? So taking a look at the roller coaster itself, I'm looking for the maximum velocity, so that really means that I'm looking for where the kinetic energy is maximum. The fastest that you can go will produce the biggest amount of kinetic energy. And the biggest kinetic energy happens right here at the very bottom of the hill. So if I could use that kinetic energy to solve for the velocity, I can find out the maximum velocity of the roller coaster. I'm going to take the maximum kinetic energy and set it equal to 1 half mv squared, where that v is going to be my maximum velocity. My maximum kinetic energy, 49,050. I know mass is still 50, and I'm looking for my velocity. I'll simplify. 1 half of 50 is 25. I'll divide both sides by 25. Bring that up since I'm out of room. Plugging that into my calculator, I get 1,962 is equal to my velocity max squared. Square rooting both sides to undo that squared, I get a maximum velocity of 44.3 meters per second. You could imagine how this exercise could be really useful for your roller coaster design and points A, B, and C a, B, C, and D that you chose on your roller coaster, finding the velocities, the energies at those different points. Coming back to the presentation, I do want to highlight that, yes, our focus is roller coasters and energy conservation within roller coasters, but this idea of conservation of energy works for lots of different forms. For example, if light energy hits a black surface, it's going to be transformed into heat energy. Or if you think of an electric drill, you're converting electrical energy into the kinetic energy of the drill rotating. Or even just a light bulb. You take the electrical energy from the outlet and that's being converted into light and heat energy. So the idea of constant energy, but something that's changing between forms can be applied to lots of different things in our everyday lives. I do want to point out though, we do not live in a perfect world. So the second part of this lecture is going to focus on efficiency.